Do we know the orcs? I'm gonna tell. I'm not sure. Is Amelia there? Yeah, Amelia's still there. Say him up. He's there. Are we live? Mm -hmm. I think we are. Yes, we are. Okay, good. Hello. Can I see if. Okay. Let's see if people come on. Okay, sounds good. So I will, I can take a look at the questions here, right? Okay, good. Okay, we are live. Hi, everybody. This is um, Barbara McConey Smith, and I'm here live uh, with my weekly Facebook Live, um, giving you updates on the COVID 19. Today, as pre announced, we have the opportunity to have a live testimony for Emilio Smakey, he's one of my clients, and um, he contracted the virus. Emilio, are you there? Can you? Yes. Hi. Hi, Barbara. Hi, everyone. Emilio, how, how are you feeling today? Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Actually, today is my first day that I'm feeling better. I, I should say that. I mean, I, I've been feeling better lately, but today I woke up feeling much, much better. Almost like back to normal. Uh, I would say 90%. Okay. So, Emilio, um, take us a little bit back to when this started. First of all, where are you calling from? Um, I live in Los Angeles, um, and I've been isolated pretty much uh, since this all started uh, on, I was in my office the last time on March 12th, let me put it this way. So that was the last day on, I'm sorry, Thursday, March 12th. I'm, I, I have my kids passing by and my wife, so I apologize in advance, it's, it's hard. Uh, and on the, on the 12th, they did a birthday party because my birthday was on March 17th. 44th birthday so it was a surprise party i was not expecting social distancing was not part of the plan at the moment yet the 13th was the last day that i was into the office um, on that weekend one of my uh employees uh was having issues breathing and she ended up in cedar sinai uh, which is the closest hospital that she is and uh, she didn't test at the moment positive for covid19 Yet they didn't admit her that particular weekend. And we thought she was just sick, but not necessarily with COVID. On the 17th, which was my birthday, I was already home. I was not going anywhere. I was here celebrating with my wife and my kids, uh, two kids and my wife, myself. So four people isolated already. And uh, I started getting symptoms the, the night of the 18th, uh, the night of the 18th, one day after my birthday. So that night, uh, I started feeling some uh, body aches and I started getting some chills. Uh, I started getting just like in the limit of the, of the fever, I had 99.8. Um, I started uh, feeling uh, a little bit of chest pain, but not nothing really bad and a little bit of cough. I thought to myself, it might, it might be just a cold. If you have the same feeling like a flu or a cold, nothing really strange at the moment. Um, and the next day on the 19th, that uh, is when I started losing my sense of smell and my taste. Uh, it was weird because I took a shower and uh, I like to use perfume after a shower and I couldn't smell it. I sprayed it on my face and no, no smell whatsoever. And I said, oh, it's weird. The, the, the perfume maybe lost its strength. Um, then I, I sat down for, you know, for lunch and my taste buds, everything what I was tasting, it was very bland. I'm originally from Mexico City. I thought maybe if I add some spices into it, it's going to add more flavor into it. So I add a little bit of, of just red chili, serrano ch chili, and I, I beat it and nothing. It was like I was eating anything, like a, be a bell pepper instead of a serrano pepper. Um, so it was very awkward. And that's when I decided to call my doctor. Okay. Um, Emilio, so you are here today because besides being my clients, you've also been following the medical medium, right? Correct. For some time now. So you're part of our family. Yes, I've been, uh, we've been doing celery juice. Uh, actually, it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be seven months now. 
So all of my my wife and, and my son has Crohn's disease, and we started reading about a medical medium. We started following, and it has helped significantly within their health. Their health. So both my wife and my son has been needing less medication because of following the advice of, of medical medium, which is amazing. Yes. Um, now, talking about your wife and kids, they happen to also get the virus, correct? We believe they do. Uh, the doctor uh, asked me at that particular moment, what about your wife and kids? Um, that weekend on the 21st, uh, my wife started feeling chills, feeling body aches, uh, headaches. Uh, my daughter, which she never feels any headaches, she says, Daddy, I have like a headache, it hurts here. Uh, but for her, for my daughter, it went out really fast. My son started coughing on occasion, but it went out fast. I mean, no, nothing deeper, no fever for both of them. For my wife, <coughs> excuse me, she didn't have any fever whatsoever, but she had some of the mild feelings of, of the uh, of the COVID. I, we were not sure, we're, we, we didn't test. The doctor said, if you start getting fever, you, immediately we're going to send you to test. In my, uh, in my case, he says, listen, based on all the boxes that I have to tick, you have all the symptoms. So there's no reason whatsoever to send you and, and take one test away from somebody that might be really in need for it. So you are, as long as you're able to breathe and you have no high fevers, we're going to avoid doing the tests. Okay. And this is going, um, <coughs> It's been going on for a while due to the lack of testings. But what the doctor told you basically is you check all the box for COVID-19, we're basically positive you do have it, uh, you know, wait it out at home unless you feel the need to come in for, you know, breathing support. Basically, that's that was the recommendation, right? That's correct. Uh, did they give you any medication? Did they say to take anything? Nothing. He says, if you feel like you need to uh, have something for your headaches, take Tylenol. Uh, don't take any Advil. That's the only recommendation that they gave me. Th that was it. Okay. Now, but on your own, you were already taking a lot of medical medium supplements. Um, oh, yes. What, what are you taking? What, what were you taking? So uh, we are, I, I've been taking the zinc and the colloidal silver for quite some time. Um, and it has been helping me. I mean, for every, I mean, I have a, I have a bad immune system, that's for sure. But uh, I have been taking those two. I've been taking the cat's claw. Uh, I've been taking uh, vitamin B12. Um, basically, that's, that's the majority of what I have been taking. Okay, so all the antiviral, all the yes. demergy antiviral suggested by Anthony, yes. Uh, and vitamin C, we said that. Okay. And vitamin yeah. C uh, as well, yes. Yes, and, and vitamin C has been proven to be very um, effective against this virus to the point that even in New York, they're starting trial with vitamin C uh, IV in the hospital. Usually those were things that were done in more like a alternative medicine practices. And now, uh, you know, traditional um, hospitals are starting the... Um, the IV and in China, actually, it was just allowed just right before the COVID. So they started the trial with the uh, vitamin C IV drip and seems to be very effective. Um, uh, and uh, see, Anthony, uh, um, Emilio, any, uh, what, what was the quantity? Um, what was the dosage of the supplements you're taking right now? Well, I've been just following whatever the indications on the bottles. So if it says, if it says like, for example, saying take two full droppers, that's what I've been taking. Uh, and so on. So depending on the supplement, whatever they say to take, that's what we've been taking. For the vitamin C, we have been doing the, the C uh, shock therapy. So I've been diluting those in actually orange juice that we make here at home. So I just take the capsule off and just like throw it in there. And, uh, and that's, that's what I take it a little bit warm. Um, and it, it has been helping for sure. I think everything has helped. Wonderful. Um, Emilio, what would you say is made a big difference in your recovery. What has made a difference in my recovery? It's, it's a good question, Barbara. Uh, I think that this has helped for sure. Um, all these vitamins and supplements as well. I mean, I, I am a true believer of the celery juice. I think the celery juice helps in any factor and form that it can. Um, I also thought 
that maybe I also got it mild. Thankfully, it wasn't that that deep. The other person that I was sharing you from my office, she ended up in the hospital at the end, and she spent seven days in the hospital. So I I know for a fact that our life cells are way different. Um, and even though I know this person for for a couple of years, uh, I know that her, her diet and and the way that we take care of our bodies is completely different. Uh, she definitely is not into any of the celery juice or any of the supplements. Um, her background, it's, uh, it's, it, she's French, therefore she eats a lot of carbs and, and it's, it's a different, I, I think her life is also more sedentary. Yes. A lot of dairy. I haven't taken uh, pretty much dairy. I stopped that, uh, some long time ago. I, I, I rarely take dairy. So I think that also helps. Absolutely. Um, and Emilio, so we, when you and I talked, um, you know, I had this theory about the, the role that the lymphatic system plays in, into um, our overall immune system and our overall immune response as to why some people, like your wife, uh, for instance, didn't get any symptoms or very mild, and you instead are still sick after the uh, March 17th. So we're looking at how many days? 14 days still with symptoms because you're still coughing, right? And you still, are you getting back your sense of smell and taste or not yet? A little bit. Uh, just last night uh, after I wash multiple times my hands, but I, last night I started washing my hands and I can smell the, the actual soap. So that was, a, that was a good sign. And yeah, I was able to eat. Um, we had some cantaloupe. I, I caught some cantaloupe last night and I was able to actually taste it. So it's not, it's mild, it's not, uh, it's weird because I also been getting my senses a little bit weird. So my sense of smell, I smell, I smell like, it's not, uh, I don't know how to describe this, but I, I have like a strong smell inside of my nose, which is not the regular sense of, of, of the ambience. And, and my taste is the same way. It feels like, uh, I don't know, like if I had not alcohol, but something weird on, on my taste, but I am starting to get something back, which is, uh, People don't pay attention to, to the taste and the smell, but they are really important in our regular lives. That, that is one of the things that I didn't get mild. I lost it completely. And, and this is something that I wish no one can feel it because it's really, it's really bad. Uh, um, Emilio, as, um, as far as, so let's go back to your wife. Your wife in the same household with a COVID, uh, COVID-19 positive case, your kids and, and your wife got it. However, their symptoms were much milder. So remember when we talked, I asked you both to do the P-test for me because I'm a firm believer that, um, I mean, I started to believe that some people that were getting hit harder may have a more sluggish lymphatic system and overall elimination system versus people that seem to just get away with chills and, and mild headaches might be, might be having a lymphatic system or elimination uh, pathways a little bit more open. So you did send me your photos, and sure enough, I just want to show them to um, to the people here. This was the the P that Emilio and his wife sent me. So you will see the one I guess on your left. The darker one is Emilio's one, um, fairly clear. It's a little dark in color, but it's fairly clear. Whereas the one on the right, then it's his wife P that has, sorry guys, has um, more of a cloudiness and sediment at the bottom. So my theory here was that whoever has a stagnant lymphatic system uh, has recirculating toxins in the system and hence a systemic, um, uh, systemic level of inflammation already going on in the body. So that when you encounter this virus or many other viruses, when in, in particular we're talking about the COVID, um, the, the body elicit uh, in, in speeds up the immune response that could be at the base of the uh, cytokine storm that makes this virus go, you know, a little bit more, um, create more complications with this virus. So, I mean, obviously this is just a theory, uh, you two, through your piece kind of prove my theory, but it's not at all any, any scientific um, study or anything, but it's just my hinge that um, having a more um, open lymphatic system and being able to properly eliminate toxins could support uh, someone's response to this virus. So that of course, we're all gonna get infected, 
but we will have a different response so that some people might have just symptoms like your wife, like just a couple of days of body aches and an headache, not even fever. And, um, and instead, so Emilio, now talk to me about what you think this experience has taught you. Because I know that for some of the people watching, some of the things that they tell me all the time is, you know, there's a lot of emotion and fear already that goes into it, right? So if you are diagnosed with COVID-19, already the word, it kind of elicits some, some fear and anxiety. Uh, what was going through your mind when you realized you had the virus and um, also living next to your kids and wife, not knowing if you were infecting them? That was, I think that was the biggest fear, uh, infecting my kids and my, and my wife. Uh, listen, I think that it crosses every, everyone's mind right now and everywhere in the world. What if I get it? Uh, I think that uh, uncertainty of knowing that A, you are going to be able to survive it, that's, that's important, but it stresses me out the fact that one of my employees had it and she was not able to breathe. So I said, when am I going to get that symptom? I, I think that was my biggest fear was, when am I going to get that symptom personally? And as far as like, even though I, I was covered, I, I didn't want to have my kids get it or my wife. And even though I was reading so many, so much information that it's out there and, and so much information that is not right or is not legitimate and so much information that it is, but, and so much new information that is coming up every single day, it was, uh, it was scaring me. And I think that just like the uncertainty was what it was scaring me the most. So that, that was probably uh, my fear. And Ultimately, I, I, I read some uh, reports saying that, you know, most of the cases are mild. That, of course, calmed me down. Uh, I've heard and I read that, that kids will, might be getting it easier. So I was more relieved on that. Of course, I was worried because my son being diagnosed with Crohn's and my wife being diagnosed with Crohn's, which are an immune system uh, disease, uh, scares me because uh, once every certain time they go to the hospital and they get a medication infused because they, they are at a very uh, uh, difficult stage, both of them. Uh, they had a very chronic disease, if I may say. So I don't wanna get them sick. I don't want them to be sick, not, not only by me or by anyone. So that was scaring me a lot. Uh, but when I started feeling all these symptoms and the doctor confirmed that I had it, then I saw what was going on and I said, listen, if everybody gets it, gets it as mild as I, I do, I think we, we're going to survive. We're going to be fine. Um, if my kids got it, which most likely I, I'm, I'm very positive that they might, um, and they got it very mild, then it's all good, you know? So I just want people to understand that first, you might not feel that you have any symptoms and you might have it. So you have to be very cautious about it, especially... Uh, you know, if, if somebody is, you know, taking food to somebody else, or I don't know, in my, I have a 92 year old grandmother, uh, which I, of course, avoided right now for the last 15 days, but she cannot go out and get any food for herself. So I'm just afraid from people that, you know, take food to their relatives or to their friends or, or medication, or, or they just go out for some specific reason, just to be very cautious. And um, I mean, this is a good point. Uh, the point that your wife, because a lot of the people that are part of our medical media community do have some underlying conditions and some um, so-called autoimmune conditions. And so a lot of people have been asking me, Barbara, would that Hashimoto, would that qualify as an uh, underlying condition? Your wife has Crohn and so has your child. And even though they, uh, I want to make sure that this message comes out clear, even though they are currently on medication for Crohn's um, and they are medical medium followers and they found so much support and so much help from the celery juice and eliminating the no foods and getting this on the supplements they still did get the virus however their symptoms were very mild even compared to yours they were not life-threatening um but you know they were extremely mild so it does not mean that if you do have an underlying condition that could be a so-called autoimmune condition um you necessarily are at risk or you are going to uh, have to die because of this virus because we have the proof here the two people one child and one woman um have it we're following though a specific diet 
uh, a medical medium died were following the protocol and didn't get, um, you know, didn't get hit as bad as many other people have, including your employee, like you're saying. So it's safe to say that you all, like you all got, uh, you know, um, got it from each other. Um, so it's safe to say that it's the same strain, even if there's just a minor mutation, the strain is that. So far, Iceland was able to isolate 40 strains, uh, but none of them really, no one jumped out of, of the bunch. That means that the variation were very small. But within your family, you know, we can, it's safe to say you guys all got the same strain of virus, and yet two people with autoimmune condition didn't, got away with fairly no symptoms. So I hope that this is a message that gets to people that makes them feel more empowered and more at peace that the right diet, the right supplementation could support the immune system response to this virus. That's correct. And and just, uh, I mean, it's, it's funny that you mentioned Hashimoto. My wife also has Hashimoto, which she has been getting better with following all the medical medium uh, protocols. Yes. So uh, yes, I, I totally agree uh, with you. Uh, and I think that people should understand that, again, we, by following these protocols, you should feel good of yourself. Uh, I'm not saying by any means, I'm not an advocate of saying people go out and, and spread it out to the world. No, no, no. This is not the time to shower the world we love. Actually, this is the time to stay home uh, and, and shower the world we love from home. But um, basically, yes, I mean, if, if, if if you need, I asked my doctor today, I said, when am I going to be able to go out? She said, well, the rule of thumb is seven days for sure. Since you started with the symptoms, you cannot go out. Um, and at least you have to have seven days of no symptoms whatsoever. So it says, if you get your, your sense of smell and your sense of taste today, that means that from today, you're going to take uh, in consideration seven days and those seven days don't go out. That doesn't mean I'm immune. Uh, he says there's uh, there there are no enough studies yet, and you might get a different type of uh, coronavirus. But uh, but I feel I feel comfortable that the way that I am feeling now, if I got what I got, I'm sure that I'm going to be able to go back to my normal life uh, soon. And I'm sure that both my wife and my son and my both of my kids, they should be able to go back to normal now. Right. Now, as far as uh, getting immunity, yes, you're right, they are still studying and um, the next stage of this virus is uh, studying antibodies and start testing people for antibodies to really understand who got it. And in fact, I was just reading recently that um, the next line of attack for the virus is for immunocompromised people. And we're talking about people on chemotherapy, not people with Hashimoto, I'm talking people about that, you know, with leukemia, undergoing chemotherapy could be to have transfusion of antibodies from people who got it, like you. So let's say you got it, you develop antibodies. So take some of your plasma, your antibodies, and put them into, um, into subject at risk uh, to protect them against the virus. It seems that because this virus behaves very much like, you know, the coronaviruses, so the previous one, like the Mar the MERS and the SARS, uh, it's pretty safe to say that once you got it, you've developed uh, a pretty good immunity towards it, because even if there are small different strains of the virus, um, your body is really familiar with it. That's why we talked about in the past uh, live, we talked about homeopathy because homeopathy uh, plays exactly on the frequency of the virus versus our own frequency and um, educating the body into what this virus is about. So by you getting the virus right now, you're pretty, you're pretty covered versus potential, uh, you know, different strain of course, mutation that this virus could assume going forward. And in fact, when people ask me, Barbara, how is this going to be over and when is this going to be over? Well, the, the sad news or the good news is it will be really over once enough people in the world will get the virus and we will start to develop some sort of natural immunity and, and, and herd immunity. They're talking about vaccines, but any vaccines that we've ever seen uh, coming to the market, really, um, they've been in studies for years. And I'm talking about 20 years, 10 years. We just talked to the guy that uh, invented the, the retrovirus vaccine. And he said that you will never go for a vaccine that is just developing 12 months. 
and he is a very pro-vax person. He said that even the vaccine, the vaccine that they did for the SARS or the MERS, uh, the side effects of them were tremendous to the point that they had to take it off the market. So, I mean, we don't want to be guinea pig for this. So when does it end? Probably when enough people would get it and they will we will develop some sort of natural immunity towards it, but homeopathy could support the body's natural ability to heal itself and understand and educate itself on the, on the frequency of this virus so that even when you catch it, then hopefully we can all get away the way your wife and your kids got away with it. Absolutely. I, I, I don't think that you know this also, Barbara, but uh, back in 2014, I, I was diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS, um, and I don't take any flu shots, for example, I can't. Uh, so I, I don't know how related they are, you know, the flu with the co coronavirus. I, I have no, no knowledge on it, but uh, I don't know if, if they developed any type of vaccines, if I'm going to be able to take it. And as, as this doctor was saying, I, I wouldn't trust a vaccine that it only has been developed because once there's not enough tests you know, yes. taken. So I would be very scared to put myself one of those. I, got, I was really sick. When I when I got the GBS, so uh, that that was a very uh, uh, fearful time for myself, for sure. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, absolutely, Emily. So, um, what are your plans now? Uh, we talked a little bit, you and I, about how much you're loving this life, not the COVID life, but this this new normal that we're all living now. I listen, I, I've learned a lot of things. I've learned a lot of things about the person who stays home, which in this case, my wife has been in the front of my house uh, for the last years since, since we got married. And I have a lot of respect now for all the Titanic work that she has done, uh, not only with my kids, but with the, the house itself. Uh, I, I travel a lot, uh, perhaps I work a lot, um, but I, I really have, uh, I've had the opportunity to really enjoy my family, my dogs, my kids. Uh, I have put in perspective many, many things. And of course, not all is, not all is money. I, I, I've been lucky myself that I have been able to work from home. Now, there's many people that cannot work from home. And I totally understand that. But, but I've learned so many things while I'm here uh that I, I i will never forget this i am sure that this um this quarantine worldwide quarantine has really a lot of things to teach us all um it's i could go on and on and on of things that i that i that i can learn from this but realistically is to appreciate not only my life but the life of the people that i love that's that's about it Yes, and this is a very good message, Emilio. Thank you so much, because um, we take so many things for granted. And whether we like it or not, this top, this kind of global stop that we've been forced to endure is, um, is helping us realize those little things that, you know, simple as having my kids playing with other kids. At least you're lucky you have two kids. I have one, and, you know, she's a little bit losing it, and me and my husband as well, because there's no interaction with other kids right now. And some something as simple as going to the park and playing with another kid now is not possible. And so these little things we take for granted, I hope that everybody that is watching right now, beside uh, maybe awful the things to your testimony, feeling a little bit more empowered um, with your experience and knowing that maybe they are on the right track, uh, supporting their immune system through uh, the medical medium way of life, um, could so feel a little bit more at ease you know, going forward of what's ahead of us, but maybe taking this time to really go inward. I just said to someone the other day, I feel that the only way out of this is in. And I really believe this. I, I believe that we're all asked collectively, we've been asked to, to, to go inward and kind of shift the, the frenzy that we were living in, the frequency of fear and anxiety and, and stress and overdoing, um, and really start to to go inward and hopefully this will change the way you will do business you and i talked a lot about how much you work and how you should be probably try to work less but it becomes almost a sort of addiction um you know in the medical medium world we talked about addiction to adrenaline and uh, all of us who work a lot we are somewhat addicted uh, to our own adrenaline and that creates a vicious cycle um 
Again, I, I truly believe that once we open up our pathways and we're able to process the toxins more properly, um, we will have less chances to be impacted by the virus. Not that we will not contract it, but like your wife, whose pee showed you know, enough sediments at the bottom versus yours, will, uh, will, help, us, um, will help us get through this virus. And, and so develop the immunity, the natural immunity, and get through the virus uh, in a breeze. However, stress does affect our immune system and does affect our elimination system and lymphatic system. So even if you eat the best diet, even if you take all the right supplements, if you don't pay attention to your stress level, and maybe your wife had a little less stress than you, it's safe to say. Uh, I know that you had to cancel two major events coming up because of the one in Europe and one in the US because of the virus. So I know that that probably created also a lot of stress, um, you know, work-wise. And now you're trying to, to still keep all of your employees, which is so commendable, Emilio, and have them all work from home. Um, so I know that I can't even imagine how stressful your life it is right now, given the fact that you're not even hundred percent and was before, but pay attention to stress is something that we should all really do diligently like we do our supplements because totally it could mean totally a difference right. between life and death. You're totally right. I mean, yeah, the stress levels can go up, but just paying attention and believe it or not, with all this stress, with everything that is going on and all these stores closed, I, I, as you know, I, I, I sell consumer products. So it's hard when the store is closed, you have no, nowhere to sell. And it stresses a lot, but, uh, but at the same time, being close to the people that you love kind of like calms you down. Yes. Um, I, I, had to, I have to put some gears down and just take it easy. And that for sure, I am listening to your advice, Barbara, for sure. And also there is a part, part of us whether we're business people, business owner, or just, you know, just human living on earth, we all tend to control things, to want it to control and predict and prevent. And I think this, this pandemic is teaching us that we really don't have any control. So we just need to drop it and, and just, um, you know, enjoy the journey, wherever that will take us, rather than try to control, you know, you're going to be fine. Uh, we're all going to be fine. And know that when we talk about a curve, you know, the curve, it's a curve that whether we're trying to flatten it or not, hopefully we will because we don't want to overload the system. The, but it's still a curve that has a beginning and an end. It's not a, a line straight to the sky. So it's going to end at some point. Um, and life will go back to what we're used to, but hopefully, you know, more mindful, more conscientious, a little bit more enriched than it was before. Absolutely. I, I agree. I, I think that everybody is, is going to learn from this. We all are. Absolutely. Emilio, thank you so much. I know you're still not feeling 100%, but thank you so much for, for being here today, for, um, you know, give us a glimpse of what this life is. And um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And, and everyone. Uh, yeah, um, I, I just want to, I just want to mention that I'm ready to, to do a, a 21 day uh, lymphatic cleanse. I'm, yes. I'm so looking forward to it. So yes, I finally was able to convince him because Emilio has been doing the medical medium life. However, um, you know, he still has his um, not vices because you can't say vices, but I mean, I think this this experience kind of uh, convinced him that was the time, especially looking at his wife's fees and his fees. That was the thing that said, okay, maybe I need to just. Um, puts a little bit more attention on my lymphatic system. So yes, I'm, I'm happy to welcome you to our next group that starts on the 4th. And I'm happy to see you flourishing stronger and stronger and teach us all something in, during our live calls. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Emilio. I mean, people are just asking things like, um, when you weren't feeling well, were you increasing the doses of the herbs? Um, were your fa is your family um was your fam what was your family eating during the illness um so uh, realistically all my family we i think we are healthy eaters uh we don't eat meat on daily occasions we eat it once a week uh, if the most eat that we meat that we eat is fish um so a lot of veggies we haven't stopped eating veggies uh, and fruits my kids i mean I, I wish i could just show you around i could 
but uh, the, the, the fruit is always here at home. Veggies are always here at home. And, uh, you know, they, they do love it. All of, both of them, I have a seven-year-old, almost seven-year-old daughter and almost a five-year-old son. And they both love broccoli, cauliflower, uh, salads, carrots, anything, anything that, that you know, beets, uh, artichokes, uh, and, uh, and blueberries, strawberries, uh, everything, oranges, bananas. It's just like, I'm very, I'm very thankful that everybody loves uh, all these type of fruits and veggies. So we just keep on doing that. I don't know if that answered the question. Yes, yes. And, it, it's, and it's great because, you know, you are really so healthy in your habits that uh, you didn't feel the need to just increase and double the doses. Uh, whoever works with me knows that I'm not really a big fan of um, heavy supplementation. So I think uh, you just did the right thing and you're doing the right thing. Uh, continue to take care of yourself and I will be taking care of you during in the next three weeks. Um, thank, thank you so much, Emilio. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I don't know how to get you out of this. Uh, I so. think I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave. So, okay. Uh, bye. Okay. Bye, Emilio. Okay, you guys. So hopefully I'm still live because we are streaming from Zoom today because um, turns out that we couldn't do a live with um, from a, a Facebook business page, so you can only do it from groups, I guess. Um, so I had to stream from Zoom, and then although I use Zoom every day, I'm not as familiar with with the live. So, but I think I'm still there. I can see me on my phone. Um, so, you guys, if you have any questions for me or something that you want me to ask Emilio, please let me know. I can see your comments here. Um, so I want wanted to bring him on board. First of all, he was feeling better. Um, thank you, Debbie. Okay, so I'm live. Um, so he was feeling better, of course. I wouldn't have done it uh, in the peak of, um, you know, when he was feeling really, really down and um, use word like desperate, because of course, whether he was able to convey this today or not, um, when you get the disease, you don't know that you're going to be fine initially, right? So his employees was attached to a ventilator for seven days in the hospital. And and you don't know, like he was saying, like, when is this going to happen to me? You know, so a lot of things go through your mind at a time. But I wanted to bring you on board because now that he's, you know, on demand and on the other side, uh, to give you that confidence that getting this virus doesn't mean that your life has to end, especially when you guys are all part of a community that is so conscious and so mindful of uh, the things we eat, the things we, we put in our body that are on the plate and off the plate. So I, I hope this... Uh, um, this little life put your mind at ease a little bit. Um, of course, nutrition is key, supplementation is key, but um, you know, I would say I have a lot of people that I work with from all over the world. Um, yesterday, I just talked to someone from Ecuador, and in Ecuador, you know, they have no access to the supplements that we do, and um, the near hospital for this person was two hours away, and she's telling me that things, horrible things are happening, like people dying in their homes and not even be able to make it to the hospital. So what I want to convey to people that are watching and may not be, you know, as lucky as some of us to have access to supplementations and, and herbs is that that is not necessarily the answer. I truly believe that Emilio's um, recovery um, would, is to be attributed mostly to his nutrition and, um, and less to the supplementation. Now, supplementation is key, is, is important, but if you can't have all the supplements, if you can't buy them, if you can't access them, I know a lot of you are concerned about the shortage. Uh, I know the Vimergy went on, on back order for some items and we constantly update our COVID resource page on healthinprogress.us daily because I know the items go on back order. So I wanna give you options. Um, and so even if you can't get all the supplements, um, even it, for sure, my advice will not be to double the supplements or triple the supplements, um, the dosage, uh, if you get ill. Um, but as I said in the past, for those of you who have not got it, I would say that the message here is to make sure, you see the doctor didn't give him anything. He said, just take a, a Tylenol for headache because there's no medicine for this. There's no antiviral that works for this. So if you do get it, uh, I think the best line of defense for me will be the prophylactic action that we discussed in the past life where um, you know you educate your body through homeopathy um, to understand what the frequency what of this virus is and what this virus is about. So um, 
that's why I, I got my hands on, um, you know, few, few packets of this uh, influenzinum CB30 that you can find on my website on healthinprogress.us, because that will kind of familiarize your body with what this virus is about, what the family of viruses are about. Um, and if you, I don't want to go back into the whole homeopathic uh, spiel here, but all of my videos, including this live, are all on my website. So on healthinprogress.us, if you go on videos, you can find my past five lives and you will find this one as well. So just go check the one that we um, did last week about real immunity and natural immunity through homeopathy. And that could be an answer to just put your mind at ease. Uh, homeopathy can be done successfully by everybody. Same dosage, children, uh, older people, uh, immunocompromised, non immunocompromised. So it's something very safe that we can do and it doesn't really cost much or, or give you any side effects. So that could be uh, help prophylactically. Key nutrition, that's why I've been, you probably, those of you who are part of my email uh, list, receives the email from me about me harping on the importance of getting on the cleanse right now as the best line of defense, the best thing you can do to your body. And you guys, I know it's not a scientific study, but you know, I strongly believe when I saw their piece, um, the different piece that a proper elimination pathways, when the elimination pathways are open, um, we lower our inflammation level and the way we respond to this virus or any other virus for for this matter it is very different and that could make a difference you know in what the outcome and the symptom uh symptom the symptoms of, of you know we will experience what kind of symptoms we'll experience so um whether you do it with me or you do it on your own most of you have done it already anyway so you know how to do it please consider now the time to to really honor your body and nourish yourself rather than go because i heard that and i understand that this could happen but go on to this binge um fear-based binge eating you know uh, i heard someone say if i have to die i want to die happy and so they're just eating all the foods that are not really serving us um anything anything so uh um, so I, I really invite you guys to consider to do a lymphatic cleanse, um, to pay attention to your lymphatic health, I should say, because it's extremely intertwined with your uh, immune system. So you want to have, you want to mount a proper um, immune response to this virus if you want to meet it, uh, meet it uh, and not an over, you know, not an immune response and overdrive, like when it, what it happens with a cytokine storm. So. Uh, consider the heavy metal cleanse. But one thing that Emilia said was his level of stress. Emilia has been my client for a while. And as he said, he travels a lot. He works many, many hours. He has a company in the US, one in Europe, and then a, a branch in Mexico. And uh, he's a very busy man. So uh, the level of stress of busy, and I do have a lot of clients that are very busy professional. And most of them are men. And if you guys have read the, the reports, this virus tend to skew more. Um, heavy on men in terms of complications, but to me it could also be because men maybe tend to be more stressed or uh, not as able to um, um, to metabolize stress like women do. Not because we don't get stressed, God knows if we do, but because I think as women we have access to uh, a way of de-stress or detoxify emotionally as well the men sometimes don't have and so they keep it all in and that affects your immune system and of course your elimination pathways and all that so um if any men are watching if if you guys are watching for your husband as well maybe this is the time to do a lymphatic cleanse together and make it as a, you know if most of you are home make it as a something new a new routine a new habit another thing that a, psychi a psychiatrist friend of mine told me this week is barbara in this in this chaos all I can advise my clients is to create a routine and go to bed by nine. No matter what you're doing in bed, meaning you don't have to go to bed by nine and sleep if you're not tired, but that could be starting a healthy routine where your cell phone is outside of your room or completely off. Um, if you, some people told me, yes, but I need to have my phone on for my kids, for my mother, for whatever. So consider talk to your um, network provider and see maybe you can get a, whole school phone like a landline it doesn't cost much it comes in a bundle usually and so but at least you have a landline and you don't have to rely on having this phone the cell phone always on you because beside emf you know uh and the blue light and whatnot it's just a stimulant for your brain and it doesn't allow you to detach especially because you know when you're on social media sometimes you can't screen the, the news so as you're going through you may see stuff that you don't need to see before you go to bed you know and that your mind and your subconscious continues to to work for 
for you an overdrive and worry for you and, and create fear and anxiety. You don't need this. So I'm not a proponent of just turn off social media. I think we need to be empowered and informed. However, there's some healthy routines that this is the time to, to put in place. So let your phone outside, your phone and tablets and TV outside of your bedroom. Go to bed at nine and start reading a book. So go on Amazon and not ideally, you know, not even on a tablet, not even on an audible unless you really can't read because of your eyes, but just buy an actual paper book, you know, and, and read it and flip through pages and, and, and train again your eyes to read a certain way and not, um, you know, through a screen. That could be something. You could do some self-love. So you could uh, put some lotion on, do some dry brushing before you go to bed, you know, and um, some lymphatic, self-lymphatic massage. During my lymphatic cleanse, I teach everybody how to do a self-lymphatic massage. And now even more so because we don't have the opportunity to go out and, um, and get a massage. So it's important to do it, to know how to do it on yourself because you, you help drain, especially this part, but you also get to know how your body feels. For us women, they always tell us to advise to do a, a self breast examination so that you can feel if anything changes, but the same works for your lymphatic system, especially this, you know, this part here, which is where we're usually um, very, very congested. So, um, Start a new habit, new routine. So routines throughout the day, because that you can control. As we said with Amelia, release control. This is not a situation where, uh, you know, the, the alpha type, the, the control freak will thrive. And in fact, if anything, we're gonna learn something here uh, to release the control, embrace, take a day at a time. Yesterday I said to a friend, I don't even wanna know what day it is anymore because the day just determines, you know, my attitude and behavior is the weekend, it's not a weekend, it's just a day and I'm gonna enjoy it. Uh, I'm gonna do what I, I know best. I'm gonna nurture my family and my clients and, and my friends and then, um, I try to enrich myself as well. So healthy routines, um, go to bed by nine and, and, and be in bed and, and be with yourself and, and look outside of the window if you happen to have a window nearby and read a book, uh, write a letter, write your diary. So, but write with your pen and paper, not, not on your computer, not on your tablet. These are times to start experiencing this new, um, new, new and, and old uh, ways of living and um, just slow down and calm down and make sure that your cortisol kind of slowly goes down where it's meant to go and stay. Um, because believe it or not, watching, looking at your phone before you go to bed um, excites you, excites your, your senses, but it also excites your central nervous system. So uh, then you have spikes of cortisol. And then have you ever noticed after you watch the computer or, or your phone that you're all of a sudden more awake? You don't want that. That it disrupts your uh, your cycle and you want to just wind down. So it might not feel asleep at nine or 9.30, but if you go to bed at nine, you might end up falling asleep, uh, who knows, maybe maybe around uh, 10 o'clock and that would be great. Um, so you guys, um, well, Michelle is asking nine with five question marks. Well, ideally, yes, Michelle, if you could. Uh, go to bed around nine and as I said nine not to go to bed and sleep but some people will especially us with kids trust me and nine we're pretty much done um now that we're 24 7 at home with a two-year-old yes I know a lot of my friends that um go to bed at nine but if you're not tired just be in bed as I said journaling um you know massaging yourself putting lotion or oil um you know dry brushing this is a good routine writing your diary uh reading a book that is what you need to do in bed besides the fact that you might be end up doing other things uh in bed as well so Lorraine, thank you so much. How is Italy? My mom is okay. Italy is uh, still in the midst of, of, um, of all of it. Um, we have had a couple of good days and those good days means that we haven't had as many uh, positive and as many deaths, but uh, the, deaths, the death rate is still very high. And um, you know, the, our, our first responders and, and healthcare uh, nurses and doctors, you know, are kind of at their wit's hands because they have witnessed uh, not just, you know, the frenzy and then inability to help everybody, but, you know, they have to be, uh, not to close this call with a, a sad note because really I don't want to do that, but um, they are the last people these people see before, you know, they pass. And so the amount of people that have been dying has put a strain on, on this emotional strain on, on our nurses and doctors because you know now they're faced daily multiple times a day uh, to have to 
to be this person, you know, that that is holding hands and that is enabling pulling up a cell phone and um, to let them say goodbye to their family. So, I mean, emotionally, and I said this in one of my very first live, like we're in the, we're not even touching the PTSD that all these people will have to deal with when this is over. Um, but so not to end, but thank you so much for asking, right? Um, so, but um, not to end this on a, on a negative note, and I know there are some Italians that are watching us, so it's time for you guys to go to bed and rest. Um, it's amazing though what we have seen from everywhere in the world the support just cuba sent us uh, a bunch of doctors and nurse nurses um i believe albany did the same uh we got helps from russia or uh the ppe from russia as well so i mean the world is really coming together to support each other um i wish the european community kind of stepped in a little bit more that they have done um but it's okay you know it's, it's a learning curve for everybody. So for all the times, andate a letto, vi voglio bene, ci sentiamo nella prossima settimana, okay? Uh, and for all of you watching, um, I'm off to a uh, consult now. So I hope you enjoy this, this live. I'll be back next week. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, to post them here. I'll respond to all of you as soon as I can. And I love you all um, and talk soon, okay? Thank you so much. Oh, yes, I'm going to be putting here um, the link to the lymphatic lens if you guys want to join. We start on the fourth. Three weeks, you do it for yourself, do it for your family and for your partners and spouses uh, and kids. So if you want to join, um, I'll put the link here, okay? See you soon. Bye.